Remove all hoses with the appropriate size open end wrench. Consider padding your wrench with adhesive foam to protect the regulator finish. Remove all port plugs with a 4mm hex key. Using a 4mm straight shaft hex key, fully loosen the shutter valve. Invert the regulator and pull out the shutter crown assembly, catching all five parts in your hand. They will include the shutter valve and its o-ring, a spring and two plastic washers, and the shutter crown as well as its attached o-ring. Using a 4mm straight shaft hex key, remove the retainer housing. Do not use a ball end hex for removal of either this or the shutter valve, as the small surface area may deform the brooch if excessive torque was previously used to attach the part. Lift off the hand wheel and set it aside. The bold prohibition in the manual against clamping the reg body in a vise is intended to protect the finish from scratches and more important, protect the cylindrical regulator body from being deformed by excessive vise force. However, a poorly rinsed regulator which has been dived in salt water with a long interval between services may have a filter retainer which is virtually locked in place by salt crystals and verdigris corrosion. Attempting to remove the regulator with the reg mounted using a vice handle screwed into a high pressure port may literally destroy the threads of the port if significant force is required to loosen the retainer. The regulator body can be mounted safely in a padded vise if the vise is used as a rigid container rather than as a clamp. Using wide leather strips cut from an old belt or thin strips of wood, lightly close the jaws rather than physically clamping the regulator body in place. The hex flats on the filter retainer are shallow to facilitate rotation of the DIN wheel. If the retainer resists loosening and an open end wrench is used to loosen this fitting, all the force is concentrated on only two flats and there is a risk of fracturing a hex point if excessive torque is required. Instead, a six-point socket will apply force on all six sides of the fitting. However, most standard sockets have a chamfer which further decreases the area over which force is applied. Consider taking a six-point socket and grinding the chamfer flat to unscrew a tight fitting. Using your choice of tool and applying downward force to keep the tool from slipping off the hex flats, loosen the filter retainer with counterclockwise force, unscrew it completely, and remove the saddle. Push out the filter with a thin dowel. Remove all O-rings from the DIN assembly and set them aside. Do not use a steel pick on these soft brass parts. The DIN o-ring is quite stiff and closely captured in its land. It may require piercing for removal before being discarded. Placing a hook spanner in the recess of the rubber end cap, twist the cap and loosen it. Pry it from the high pressure seat end of the regulator and set it aside. Locking the regulator in position with a vise handle, 
use a five millimeter straight shaft hex key to loosen and remove the high pressure seat retainer. Do not use a ball end hex. It has inadequate surface area to apply the force that may be required and may damage the brooch of the retainer. Use a plastic pick to lift out the spring. If it is loose in its land, use a plastic pick to retrieve the O-ring. Do not use a metal tool, which may scratch the piston, resulting in IP creep. If it isn't loose, consider waiting until after piston removal to avoid damaging the critical knife edge. Using a thin blunt pick, push out the high pressure seat. If it is stuck or resist removal, do not push harder. You may damage the high pressure seat retainer. Instead, an air gun with a rubber tip and 40 PSI applied to the hex brooch will pop it out easily. Remove the high pressure seat retainer O-ring. With the regulator held with a vice tool in a high pressure port and using a number five hook spanner, loosen the end cap. It is important to not lose the loose metal washer surrounding the piston shaft when the regulator is inverted. You may use either a 0.24 inch pin in the large recess or a 0.156 inch pin extended to the depth of the smaller inner hole. It is important to choose a hook spanner of the correct diameter. The regulator body is slightly smaller than a number five hook spanner. The spanner will thus rock when force is applied and the pin will lift and potentially slip, heavily marring the regulator finish. Pad the heel of the spanner with four thicknesses of paper to protect the finish and prevent pin lift. This keeps the pin at right angles to the regulator. Maintaining control of the pin, loosen the end cap. Remove the regulator from the vise and carefully unscrew the end cap, maintaining compression of the spring to protect the threads. As the end cap comes free, the piston will either come out with the assembly or remain behind. It is critical that the final withdrawal of the piston is done along the axis of the body with no rocking motion to avoid scratching the knife edge at the end of the piston. These scratches will cause high pressure gas leak or IP creep and require replacement of the piston. Once the piston is free, no other metallic parts should be allowed to come in contact with the knife edge. Placing a piston bullet helps protect this critical surface. If the piston remains behind, the same care should be taken to remove the piston coaxially with the body. Without scratching the knife edge, carefully install a piston bullet to help guide the piston out and prevent rocking. Replace the piston bullet and then remove the spring. And washers and set them aside. The upper washer may resist removal. To avoid damaging the finish with a pick, consider an air gun with 40 psi to easily dislodge this component. Remove the piston head o ring. The pinch technique usually suffices with this large, soft o ring. Store the piston away from contact with any other metal parts. Using a thin wooden dowel inserted at an angle from the spring end, push out the stack of washers and o ring from the bore of the body. Do not use a metal tool. The inner bore of the body is a critical high-pressure seal. 
set the three components aside. Now, working from the other side of the body, use a nylon pick to pry the second stiff high-pressure O-ring inward from its land until it can be retrieved with the point or pushed out with a wooden dowel. This O-ring is closely captured in its land. After a two-year service interval, it may defy easy removal. It may be so stiff that, in fact, it may break a nylon pick. Do not use a metal pick to pry the O-ring free of this critical seal. In experienced hands, using the smooth curved side of a steel double hook pick will make removal of the stiff number 27 O-ring much faster. It is, however, a dangerous tool for soft brass. Consult the instructional pamphlet available on the Dive Gear Express website for further information on its safe use. Screw a vise handle into one of the low pressure ports in the turret and use a six millimeter hex key to unscrew the nut from the port swivel. Do not use a ball end hex key. It has inadequate surface area and may damage the brooch. Disassemble the end cap components. And confirm that you have six parts after removing the port swivel O-ring. Remove all port plug O-rings if this has not been accomplished. Lay out parts in a logical fashion following the schematic in preparation for cleaning and reassembly. This completes disassembly of the Dive Gear Express Gears Extra First Stage. Dive Gear Express videos are made available for educational purposes only to provide general understanding of scuba diving related topics and not to provide specific advice. Please read the essential information page at the URL shown.